Hi, this is Kevin with Let Me Tech You, and, and we're back with another video on some Kubernetes troubleshooting commands using kubectl. Now there's four different commands. Now there's a ton of different commands you could use, but in this video, I'm gonna go over four that you'll probably most likely be using a lot. And those four are gonna be kubectl git, kubectl describe, kubectl logs, and kubectl exec. So what I'm gonna do is get started here. So if you're already uh, you know, familiar with um, Kubernetes, you're probably already gonna have some nodes built, um, a cluster, things like that running. So you'll be able to execute some of these commands without causing any problems. As long as this isn't in like a test environment, I would more so um, you know, always look to try to do like things that you're learning uh, away from your production side. So what I'm gonna do first here is I'm gonna do a kubectl git. And basically what this is doing is hitting the API server that talks to your cluster and talks to any of the resources that you're trying to get to. So if you're not familiar with too much of what the Git does or kubectl, you can actually, let me see, Q, let me do a, okay, so we got our nose running. So that's my mini cube. So basically that's just my cluster running amongst itself there um, with all the uh, different components built inside of it. So uh, let me see, git dash h. So if you come here, um, using the dash h a, a lot gives you the ability to kind of get some examples of things that you can do, such as like get the pods, list all the pods in the output format, List all pods in a, in a PS output format with more information, such as no name. So things like that. So these are things that you'll be able to kind of use examples from and kind of build off of. And then there's some other options. So, you know, the dash A gives you all the namespaces. Um, if you're looking for more pods that's outside of your default namespace, things like that. So if you're looking for like services, different resources. So I don't have any get if I do pods actually let me clear this get back to the top so as you can see I don't have any pods um, currently running in a default namespace but if I do a dash a I can see all the pods um, inside of other namespaces so you got cube dash system which is the etcd mini cube um, pod um, API server proxy, scheduler, provisioner, all these different things that's currently running. And this is all um, default from launching and installing Minikube, which is like the uh, small scale development cluster that you can run when you're first learning to uh, you know, develop inside Kubernetes. So what I'm gonna do here is uh, I have a development file and inside of here, I basically have a YAML configuration to build out some nodes. And if I open it up here, you can basically see it's a deployment. Um, the name is Nginx deployment. The app for the label is Nginx. And then the specs, I got replicas, two of them. And then you can see containers are gonna be running Nginx for the name and then the image and then the container port. You don't have to worry about that. You probably already have most of that figured out. But if you're not, you know, you can kind of, you know, go to Kubernetes website and kind of decipher some of the uh, formatting for the YAML configuration there. So I'm gonna go ahead and run that. And to run that, this is uh, something that's, it's just kubectl apply, file name, and then deployment dot, or dash ngx dot YAML. So now that that's deployed, I can now do a kubectl git. And if I do a dash a, and it is case sensitive, kubectl git pods dash a. So now you see that these are in the default namespace. So if I took the dash a out, let me just get back to the top there. So I got my two pods running there. Um, so now I got those two running, uh, the status is set to running and you can see that the age is there. 
So now we can get into, now there's other things and you might not, you might be doing services. So you could do like, if you have services running cube, CTL, get services, got the cluster IP, um, Kubernetes. And then, uh, and then if I would do the cube CTL, get endpoints. So, you know, there's a lot of like this, you know, discovery that you can do using this git command. And you'll want to use this, you know, as you're trying to just, you know, determine like, you know, uh, the age of, uh, some of the stuff running the status, um, you know, if any of their things have been restarted, uh, like I said, get, you know, we can do get pods. And then I think we had, let's, let's do a dash H again, come back up and O slash. So that's the one I wanted to run. So get dash, dash O Y. So now you can see the difference from that versus that. So now you're getting the IP, the node that it's running on and this other information here. So, so, you know, using the dash O Y and just gives you more information about your particular pause, specifically the, uh, IP addresses for those particular pause that uh, are um, running. So now if I go back in and let's do like a, we're going to get into the kubectl describe. So the describe command gets, uh, well, basically the, since the, the get command gets resources, you can then use the kubectl describe to get more details of a specific resource or a group of resources. Now, it shares a similar resemblance to kubectl to git, except that the describe option gives you more specific details, um, which we'll sh I'll show you here. So again, it goes kubectl describe dash h. And here it says a printed, a detailed description of the selected resource, including related resources such as events or controllers. So now we wanna describe a node so we can say kubectl describe nodes, Kubernetes nodes, dot, blah, 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 everything else in there. We can describe a pod. So let's do, clear this out. So let's do a kubectl get pods. And then I'm gonna do a kubectl describe and I want to describe this pod here. And it's copy and then paste. Uh, oh, a second here. So now, as you can see, we have a lot more information about what we typically, um, would have is almost like in a, almost you could say in a YAML format a little bit, but it's more, um, like a status file almost. So it's like name, namespace, priority, service account, when it started, any labels. So you see we have our app NGINX label. So that could be useful if you're trying to de uh, determine um, what labels are assigned to a particular pod. If it's uh, having an issue, um, maybe with connectivity, maybe your, uh, um, Network policies are not permitting this particular label, stuff like that. We got our IP address status, it's running. Um, let's see, control by replica set. Then the containers, so we got a Docker ID, the image, image ID. So you can see like all the information that you're kind of getting out of this here. And then also then some events down at the bottom. So successfully assigned container image already present on machine, created container, started container. So if you had some issues with this coming up, those events down there at the bottom could essentially give you more information on what's, uh, what's going on inside the uh, container when it's trying to start. So let's clear that out. Now the other one is kubectl logs. Now the logs is basically a way to issue um, you know, use, get useful information about 
maybe when the container was up and running, if it's like a web app, anything that's going like that. Now you might have a lot of this parsed out to some type of uh, logging system, whether it's Splunk or Grafana and all those other different types of, uh, you know, um, systems that gather metrics for you to easily see them in a more presentable fashion. So I'm gonna go kubectl logs and then dash h again. So now if you see, if as you can see, we get again the same format. So kubectl logs nginx, and this says here, return snapshot logs from pod nginx with only one container. So our uh, pods only have one container in them as well. So I'm gonna run this same kubectl logs and then the container name. So kubectl logs, bring this back up here. Logs, and then actually let's get the, oh. Logs, and then, oh, I didn't say it. So let me look again, kubectl get pods, kubectl get, or no, logs, and then let's grab this here, and paste. Oh, so we have no, nothing there in particular. Let's try this one here. C, and paste. Okay, so we don't, looks like we're not getting any logs out of those. So kubectl logs. Let's do a dash P and paste. Not found. Okay, so yeah, might not have any logs being returned, but that's fine. So basically, um, yeah, we could do, let's try this. Let's go by the label. kubectl logs label is app nginx. Yeah, so yeah, it looks like we don't have any, any logs being parsed and that's fine. Um, could just be that I didn't grab any when it was running or be, when it came up. So yeah, but basically that that's a good one you might come across whenever you're running into uh, any issues with the particular container or pod itself. So basically, and then the last one that's actually, I probably feel is the most useful is actually the um, exec command. So the kubectl exec, and basically what this does is it gives you root access directly into the pod that you're, uh, the container that you're trying to uh, actually um, get inside of. So if we go, let's run kubectl get or exec dash h. So as you can see, let's give us an example here. So exec, so you can see kubectl exec, my pod container, Ruby container, I, T, which is interactive terminal, and then bin bash or bash, some people do bash here. So I actually save this command here in a note and I usually typically save commands because sometimes you might not remember all of these commands. And if I can find the one that I had here. So this one here, kind of similar, but just got to change it up a little bit. So I'm going to go clear and let's do a kubectl git. Okay, and then let's do a, let's paste in the one that I copied. And then I'm gonna remove this part. And I'm gonna copy this. 
copy that and then paste it in. And let's just make sure we got, okay. So now as you can see, I'm currently on Kevin's case in my MacBook and then in the documents folder. But then once I go ahead and hit enter here, you can see I'm directly on the actually the actual container there. So if I do a LS, you can see that I'm actually on the uh, container directly. I'm no longer on my um, C documents because if I go back, if I hit exit and I do an LS, you can see I'm in my documents folder. So you can go in there. And the good thing about this is if we're having issues actually say connecting to things, trying to get out to the internet, you know, you can do, you know, curl google.com. Oh, I don't actually have curl uh, installed. But you know, um, I think I could do app get or app install curl. Uh, forget what the actual. Let me see if I do a ping. Let's try a ping. Okay, let's try to let's see what the command is to install something like that. Is install curl Linux. And let's see, just app install curl. Yeah. Yeah. So that's probably sudo app install net. Let's try net tools. Yeah, as you can see, it's a basic image. So there's really not a lot of stuff installed on it, but that, that's fine. I'm not gonna go too deep into uh, installing any tools and stuff on there, but basically this just gives you an idea that that's how you'll wanna actually um, uh, get onto any particular host or uh, containers that's causing problems or you need to troubleshoot with, or you just wanna you know work directly off of and install some things on. So that command there, like I said again, and then once you do you know your exit, you know, come back on to your main uh, computer. And now, like you said, like I said, we're back in um, directly on the host that we're do using to manage the uh, the nodes and containers and pods using the kubectl and the API server configuration. So again, that's it there. Uh, just four just simple commands that I felt that were very important when learning Kubernetes as a beginner. Um, also using the dash H when you're having, um, you know, difficulties understanding what you can use with the command. And I highly recommend saving some of those commands in a sheet, like a one note of some sort. That way you don't have to try to remember every single command that you'll, uh, need to re reference again. And again, you can even just do kubectl dash H and it'll give you a bunch of different basic commands that you'll, uh, for you know that you'll be using a lot of some other basic ones some deployment ones and then i can actually go in and delete my current deployment now that i'm done i can find well let's try this kubectl delete dash f and then point deleted now I don't have any of those um, any of those resources there again so again if you have any questions in regards to any of your commands or any questions in regards to uh, how I set any of this up leave me a comment down below um, and I'll get back with you again you can always check out my uh, site letmetechu.com I'll put that down in the comments below check that out let me know if you have any questions and I'll be sure to get back with you Again, thanks for tuning in and hope to see you next time.